So, you want to know how to draw a hand. Well, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta get a reference. Now, I'm not the best at drawing hands, but I will do my best this. So, with a reference, I like to pull it out and put it right next to the drawing you're gonna do. So, let's put that bad boy right there. Another thing I'd like to do is I like to immediately start out by blocking, like, big shapes. So, like, here's the arm. And then it keeps going that way. And now we gotta do the actual hand. It's good to have a reference for what the arm looks like as well. In my opinion, it's better to draw the hand first, but it's also good to have just like an under sketch of what the arm, where it goes, you know, just so you don't make the fucking hand too massive. I also like to do like really quick strokes. This is just gonna be the sketch. I like to do this kind of shape for fingers a lot because I think it acts good as a sketch. It also helps to like illustrate dynamic hand poses. Can't really do one off the top of my hand, but you know. Now it's also important to know how the hand kind of works. There's a lot of folds, right? When you move your hand, if you look at your hand, uh, let's see if I can pull up a picture. If we pull out a picture of a hand, let's move this guy over. Boom. If we look at a picture of a hand, it's really important to know how the hand works, right? And it's good to also look at your own hand. When you press your hand down, like you move your fingers this way, I'm not drawing on it. When you move your fingers this way, your hand, these parts, will bend together. It'll go this way, so this part and this part will kind of crease together, and it'll create folds. And then when you stretch your hand all the way out, there's not as many folds. Moving your hand and your fingers, it also depends on how fatty your hands are. Like for me, I have a pretty, pretty normal hand. I wouldn't say it's fatty or slim. It's pretty average and I create a lot of folds when I move them. Skin is very skinny, if that makes sense. Skin has properties of skin. It's important to know that skin is not just some flat object that is around your face. It can just move and you can move it. And you can like drag your skin out, right? If you think of like a guy who like was fat and then worked out, and the skin is like now a little bit more loose. That's that's a good example of how skin can behave. It stretches and compresses itself. Your thumb also is in a very specific spot where there will usually always be a lot of folds, as we can see here. All right? It's also important to know how the lines of the palm work. A good, a good tip, <coughs> excuse me, a good tip is that it usually always kind of goes like this. This is the palm, right? And it kind of is a shape that extends a little, so it goes kind of like this. And then everything else kind of goes inwards. This part of your palm, it kind of dips inwards. Like imagine you're holding your palm out. You can use it to hold water, right? This part of your hand definitely is also extended. And then this part, it kind of goes back up. That's how the palm works, right? And remember that shape I told you? Well, it kind of does work. There you go. And again, this is obviously for rough sketches. Your fingers don't look that pointy. It's good to, like, cap it off. The edges of your fingers, actually, they all kind of depend on the person. For a more dainty-looking hand, it'll be a lot more, like, you know, a lot more slim, a lot more pointed. And for a more like rough, like flatter hand, the fingertip will be a lot more rough and flattened. Mine are pretty rough and flattened themselves, if I look at my hands. Let's see if I can pull up the image right now. Here's a good example. Here's my hand, right? Ah, let's move that up. Here is my hand. You can see that these edges are so rounded over. I have pretty sausagey fingers. And it's important to know what kind of hand shapes that exist. Because not every hand is the same, and it's okay. 
It's also important to know that for the reference you're using, because imagine if you want a really dainty hand and you're using something like this, well you're gonna intentionally or unintentionally draw a hand that has very rounded out fingers. So it's also important to alter a bit from the reference, especially if a pose looks really unnatural. Because sometimes a hand will move in an unnatural way and it looks really strange. Like right now my, my pinky looks really extended, but that's just my hand. Nothing in it is wrong, I didn't alter this image, it's just that it looks a little off. So let's go back to all of, all of these ignoring parts. So delete all of these and go back to what we were doing. So, I like to work from the bottom up. I like to just draw the thumb and then kind of extend with the palm a bit. Sometimes if a shape is really hard, I'll like sketch out a shape of it. It kind of just depends on how I'm feeling, honestly. And then I just keep altering it, you know. Oh, this doesn't look that good. Oh, this looks good. Sometimes it's also good to draw the fingernails to know where the angle of the finger is, you know. Just, a, just something slight. I don't usually draw fingernails on my hands. Uh, sometimes a lot of people do, sometimes a lot of people don't. I think it depends. If I ever do, I usually kind of just go for black. You know? It's also, if it's too hard to draw a pose that way, no shame in just rotating the image. I find it way easier to draw hands when they're in their standard position of just that way. Well, technically that's not standard position. Technically anatomical position is when your hands are this way. When your hands are just, oh, hold on, there's the one to the other side. When your hands are just, god damn it, that way. That is anatomical standard position, where your arm goes this way and then the other arm is this way. That is anatomical position. Yeah, <laughs> and then let's go back to what we were doing. It's important to have your reference like right next to you so you know what you're drawing as well. Because otherwise it, it's just kind of lost in, in definition, right? Like you'll look at the reference, you'll understand the general gesture. And that is an important thing as well, to understand the gesture. Because you don't want really stiff hands. But it's also important to get the anatomy as well. You gotta have a good combination of both, and sometimes it depends on what your, your drawing needs. You can see I made the thumb and the part of the arm a little too high, so we're gonna move all this down. I also like to include- God, I keep doing the square! It's so useless. It, it's also important to include, like, kind of like your joints. If you bend your thumb, or if you bend your finger, like, let's look at what this guy's doing right here. You can see that there is a bend to it. There is- your finger will go like this. Right here, that's the bend. And then it'll do it again. Another bend. You know, your fingers aren't that flexible, but in a perfect world, that's how that would work. Like if I'm looking at my at my index, just bend your fit index all the way. It just goes like this. Bend, bend. And also it's important to know how many parts of the finger there are. Because it's very easy to just, oh, well, there's my finger. Well, no, there's three parts to each finger. Your finger also, as it bends and as it creases, it will have size variation ever so slightly. Your fingers aren't going to go like that, but ever so slightly. And it's also important to know that as your fingers will crease upwards and downwards, there will be these parts right here that indi indicate these segments of your finger. And as your finger is bending over, it can be way more easy to see. Let's go back to what we were doing, which was actually drawing the hand. At this point, it's kind of just understanding, like, okay, well, that's how the hand works. Okay, I'm just gonna make it try to not look stiff, you know? And then it's just about walking out the shapes, you know? And trying to figure out what looks right and what doesn't, you know? It's also important to know what's between the fingers, right? Like, there is ever so slightly this, that shape. That shape, that dip. It's like a, it's like a V, but not really. It's more like a U. 
And the angle also matters too, right? Because your hand, it's a 3D object. You know, it'll look like this. Imagine these are two fingers. It'll look like this as well. And that that area, this dipping area, is very like important to include. Because otherwise your fingers are just gonna look like that. That doesn't look right. Your fingers are very weird and they're really uncomfortable to draw sometimes. It's also important if you start realizing that your hand is too big. Like, just, that's fine. Keep going with it, right? And then just shrink it and then draw it over again. I don't know how many times I've done that, but it's, it's been, definitely been a lot, right? Stop! If I draw the square one more time, I'm just gonna end it all. And... And it's important to know... I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> Fingers are weird, and it's okay if they look kind of weird, because, like, they're not going to look perfect the first time. So it's important to just keep readjusting and keep redrawing that, like, that drawing. You're never going to get the perfect one first try, you know? It's also important to, in your head, kind of imagine how long each of these fingers are. So let, let's pull this one out. So this one goes that way. So. If we were to extend this out, it would go that way with a little bit of wiggle room because of how the fingers bend. And ideally you want those fingers to like be not the same length, but be the general length that you expect them to be. The middle finger is always going to be the longest. The ring and the index are about the same size and the pinky is obviously really small. It's like three, it's like two thirds of the of the ring and the index finger. Usually the ring finger is ever so slightly taller than the index. You know, that's a very gross exaggeration of hands. But you get it. What are we doing? Drawing a hand, right? Which one's the hand layer? There it is. Let's get rid of this. I think you understand. It kind of just is for me, just kind of feeling around and feeling what feels right. It's okay to draw the segments. I usually erase them because if you draw each individual segment, it'll look kind of weird. Although sometimes it can stylistically look cool. I think some people make it work, but you know, for like a, just a normal anatomical hand, it's okay to just not include those segments. And kind of just work with what you got. Again, I'm drawing in the fingernails just because it helps me a little bit, you know. I'm also using a really thick brush, right? Like, this is a thick brush, which helps me to kind of understand what I'm doing a little bit better. I also like to include the, the, the like, shit, I always forget, tendons. I like to include this, like, one tendon. It kind of runs down. Let's pull up an image of my good old friend, the meat man. My, my lovely male 3D model. Or we could even pull up Share Care U for more accuracy, but, you know, this guy got it pretty much covered. Well, I guess not. It doesn't include the tendons on this. Opening up Share Care. Ew, I zoomed in too far and I saw his penis. It's gross. There we go. Ah, I forgot it was rotated. There we go. Your thumb has all these weird individual muscles, right? And here's a very important thing to know, is the tendons that work along with it. Here's a big tendon that kind of runs through all the fingers, but it doesn't really move, run through the thumb. Your fingers can act individually of the thumb. The thumb acts individually of the finger. However, your fingers, they all kind of move in unison because this is all attached to just one thing. Your thumb, however, it's a little different. It kind of runs that way. Sorry, I zoomed in on the reference. It kind of runs that way, whereas your fingers, they all kind of run this way. So if you look at your hand, it's not really easy to see on mine because I'm kind of fat. <laughs> but you're, 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 you'll have these two tendons that kind of run down. You can feel them. As you, as you flex your fingers and your thumb, you can feel the two. And it's really weird. It feels cool. 
You can also feel veins uh, as well. Ooh, is that a little bit of muscle I see on myself? Damn. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> and then uh, we can see also veins that run down. But that's just more an anatomy of the arm. But it's important to know the anatomy of the arm when you're working with the hand. Because otherwise you'll have this awesome, super detailed hand. And then just like a stick for an arm. Your hand and your arm will go hand in hand. No pun intended. Because like if you have a really skinny body, your hand's gonna be a little more skinny and twinky. And then if you're if you're a really buff guy, you're gonna have like tendons and shit. Because it would make no sense if your arm muscles were defined, but your hand muscles weren't. What were you not? Was someone else fucking lifting your arms? Uh, anyways, let's go back to this. You can see though, now that I'm looking at it from a different angle, I can tell that that index finger is way too long. So let's go back here and fix it a bit. Just ever so slightly make it a little less chunky. There we go. That looks pretty normal now. Let's zoom out. Yeah, that looks a lot better, in my opinion. Maybe it is still, like, a little slightly long, but that also looks long because this part should go a little farther. Kind of goes like this. There we go. And that's a fucking hand. And that is not done. No, sir. We still need to work on how it actually works. Which is, well, with line art. That's a pretty good pen. At this point, it's kind of just like, adding the details. I like to add these creases. Um, not like fully like lines, but you know, just slight creases and such. And you know, make it look like a hand. This part's kind of extending this way instead of upwards, so I kind of got that wrong in the sketch, but that's why we're doing line art. And it's not like that's not how hands work, but if we want to do this specific shape, you know, there you go. You would want to adjust as you keep going. But I think you know that. I I know you know that, buddy. You're you're so smart. Give me a kiss. And then, of course, there's a little bit of the fat of your skin that kind of goes this way with your hand. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It extends. Same with here. Kind of goes that way. Your hand, its basic shape is like a pentagon, right? So like that. But if we look at it more specifically, the pentagon's kind of slanted. It's like that. Because your fingers kind of sit on the pentagon. If it was just straight across, all your fingers would have relatively the same shape and size. So that's why it's a pentagon. The highest, in the, the highest point of the pentagon is where your middle finger is, and then the second highest is where your ring and index, and then the third highest or the lowest is where your pinky is. And then of course, your pentagon kind of splits again, and now there's a thumb. And that's the very basic shape of a hand. And of course, your pentagon once again kind of does something weird, and it kind of goes like that. So it's like a pentagon, but more complicated. And I drew that on the wrong layer. Keeping up with this, we could just start going from wherever we feel is necessary. You know, just adding details as we go. I do think that sometimes the fingernail can definitely add to it, but sometimes it's best to just keep it out. What I like to do for between the fingers is I kind of add a little bit of shadow. Like that. Because it insinuates that there is some depth to it. And it also doesn't look too bad. I made this a little bit too, like, sharp compared to the other finger. So we're gonna just ever so slightly change that. Now with the with the fingernails, they all kind of have this general like shape or that shape or even that shape. It's kind of just about what you see on the drawing. Like here I see there's a curve, two lines, then another curve. But to me, that doesn't really insinuate how the finger really works, which is, it is a shape. And sometimes it's good to have this curve around the finger. And all these fingers, you know, they're just kind of like tubes. You can see it that way. 
then you can draw fingers. They're not exactly tubes, but they kind of feel like tubes. Now this one, this one would be okay to, to draw like that, because the angle is not, you know, this way. But instead, just straight facing down. So I see no problem in drawing it, like, as it is on the photo. Although sometimes I will, like, do that as well. Again, it just depends on what looks best in the moment. Because again, you can break the rules of anatomy a little bit. But as long as you're not shattering the rules of anatomy, you know? Like here, you can see that it kind of goes like a staircase. It's like, uh, da, 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 da. So we're gonna have to lower this a little bit. Do that. I'm making the, th the pinky a little shorter so it doesn't look too insane. I like to sometimes add the, like, the wrinkles on your fingers. You know, like, on a finger you got, like, these bits. Sometimes I like to add them, sometimes I don't. Again, it's more up to preference. I'm noticing again that I made the, the index a little too insane looking, so we're gonna shrink that bad boy. And there we go. Those are the fingers. Now we flip it, doesn't look too bad. Let's add the thumb and add everything else and then we can look at it from a different angle and we can be like, oh shit, something's wrong. This is kind of how this thumb works. It's kind of to the side a bit. Which is fine, although well, mine looks a little strange. So I'm just gonna try to include this little dip and just draw it as you see it. You know? Of course, don't forget those creases, those juicy creases on every hand. Don't worry, this thumb isn't done. <laughs> I know it looked kind of stubby there, but we are nowhere near done with that. But the thumb, sometimes I like to just go back to how I draw fingers, which is just that kind of shape. I like to make the thumb really fat. Because your thumb naturally is a pretty fat thing. You got fat thumbs, bro. I'm kind of struggling right now with this, with this fingernail, so I might just not include it. For now. And you know, work on it a bit. And you can see here, there's a bit of folding around there. I'm sure if we turn this image, you can see that there's a lot of folding around here, because right now your thumb is pushing the skin this way. Which is really interesting. That looks cool. That's a cool effect. There is also. No, I don't really like to add this part of the hand, because then it kind of just looks like you're adding too much detail. And as you can see, we definitely made it too small. Luckily, we only had a hand and not an arm, so we can just make the arm a little bigger. You know, that looks way better. And look at the Im image once again. From a full image, you can see the arm kind of extends this way. And it looks cool. Not that strong of a, of a bump, but you know. That's a fucking hand. And you can see right here, there is still those tendons showing. And you know, not so much on your fingers. Your finger th tendons, they don't show as much. It's, it's more so your thumb. Like I can see it right now on my hand. There's that small dip. And let's that, erase that. Well, I can, I can just cuts off here. So we'll just draw that there. And then there we go. That's a hand. And if we get rid of the original sketch, we can see like, oh, well, I forgot to connect these parts. Okay, that doesn't look so bad. I'm not noticing anything too insane right now. Okay, okay. Uh, well, the finger kind of doesn't bend in the way that I want it to. It should be more like that. So I can adjust that if I want, but if I think that this pose is optimal, then I think it's okay. I'm also noticing that I still haven't put the, the fingernail for the thumb, but now that I'm looking at it at a different angle, it looks a lot easier to draw, so... It's just about, you know, adjusting these little things. There's a little bit of a 
that they dip here that I can do. But that's again on the hand. You know, there's obviously hair. But I wanted to draw the hair. Usually your your the inside of your hand, like this area, this inside of your arm, will not have as much hair. If you look at your own arm, you can tell. But it kind of, again, it varies from person to person. So if I zoom in a little more on this, and I zoom in a little more on that, we can see, well, it doesn't look too bad. Again, I might want to fix this index finger. So I might, what, I, what I might do is I might just <laughs> do that to cheat a bit. You know, make it a little shorter, if anything. Because if this bends, it's going to get a little shorter. And that doesn't look too bad itself. You know, again, just small adjustments. Ever so slight, you know. And that's kind of just how I draw hands. Now, for a more complicated hand, again, what I would more so do is a... Or sometimes even a more simple hand. It kind of depends on what you feel like you need in the moment. Like, sometimes what I will do is I will literally just outline the hand myself and just imagine it like an outline, like, uh... Like that. But it doesn't really work as well when the fingers are overlapping, although sometimes it does. Like, let's pull up the drawing I did for Mikey. Here we go. If we erase all of this shit and just go back to the original drawing and erase this and erase this, we just look at the line art from itself, we can see that I'm pretty sure I kept the hand sketch, which is just that. That was my hand sketch. And then I'm pretty sure I also did one for the other one, but that one was more just a regular sketch where I just kind of drew it out. Also over here, I think it kept the sketch, but I'm not too sure. And yeah. It's all about just what you feel like you need in the moment. Let's see if I have any other hand drawings. There it is. Let's move this back over here. Nope. <laughs> Take up all the space, thank you. Readjust this every time. Yeah, here. You can see that for this one, which I shrank a lot more, because the face is not, you know, the hand does not go that much on the face. I literally just sketched out like what I thought the hand gesture looked like. For more of these though, oh that doesn't count, that's all I'm thinking of. Nope, that's not it. I would just kind of outline the hand as well and then adjust it. Like you would just sketch the hand. Same for this one, you gotta adjust it. Now for this hand, I like if I could go back to it, I'll tell you right now, it's good to flip it around because you'll notice like, ah well this middle finger is kind of weird looking. But you know, it's important to look at it from different angles. This one, the fingers might be a little too thin, but it also does depend on like what the hand is. <laughs> this is a third way of sketching where you kind of just ignore the fingers and you kind of just draw out where they're going. It's interesting, I guess. It works. It works for me. It's good to like look at the reference, you know? And that's kind of just how I draw hands. And hopefully that helped a little bit. You know, and always don't forget, human anatomy is so weird. And it really varies from person to person. And sometimes what is looking like a rigid pose, like, oh, that could never be done, is actually just a hand angle from a different angle. So hopefully that did help a little bit. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I had a lot of fun making this tutorial. Thank you for watching.